Okay, so as you probably guessed by the short intro, this is a Doctor Who record. This is Doctor Who and the Pescatons. Um, this particular copy was, uh, well, the master was laid down in 1976 by Argo Recordings, which was a, um, a sort of like a section of De the Decca Record Company. So Decca's got like a, a hugely good history with producing quality music. And going from my other recordings on the Argo label, um, this is no exception. It's nicely recorded. This copy does have a few surface scratches on it, um, which for something that's over 40 years old, that's not overly surprising. And uh, yeah, it's a very good, you know, it's a very good story. It's very well executed. I like it a lot. Um, you might be wondering why I've picked out what appears to be a single Doctor Who episode um, to order over the internet. And this is one of my few um, examples of ordering records over the internet. It usually weirds me out a little bit because, you know, anything can happen from the moment the person posts it and records are kind of delicate. But this arrived in perfect condition. Thank you very much to the seller. Um, and uh, was reasonably priced. It came in at £5 for the record and £3.70 for postage which considering posting the record in the UK costs £3.40, spending an extra 30 p for postage is uh, no biggie. So there are two reasons I wanted this. Um, one is that it was re-released on Record Store Day, um, uh, and uh, I really, really wanted to get it, and I was pre prepared to pay on Record Store Day the going rate, which I think its release price, depending on the record store, was £30. And two, I'm just a major Doctor Who fan, and I love audiobooks, so that's, a, that's I suppose, three reasons. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't get to buy the Record Store Day version, even though it came on orange and green vinyl and looked very cool and had a sound effects album with it and stuff like that. But it's it's running around 30 quid on eBay, whereas this just came in at 8 quid, so that, that seemed like a better deal to me. And I'm starting to build up a bit of a collection of Argo recordings. Um, the other stuff, which I will go into, I will do little mini-reviews all clumped together and maybe do a little bit of a hit the history of the Argo record company, but this is a very first video. Um, I thoroughly believe in the concept of Kaizen, as in you improve as you go along, and that makes it more interesting for people to get into. Um, so the other recordings that I hope to review are Dylan Thomas's Under Milk Wood, uh, Tolkien's uh, The Hobbit, and uh, Richard Adams's Watership Down. Now, The Hobbit and Watership Down are quite lengthy books in a way, certainly compared to Undermilk Wood, and they come in at sort of like four records each. And Undermilk Wood is a two-record set. But again, they're all on Argo. Um, and these things seem to be very worth looking out. Um, the cool thing about audiobooks is they don't get played as much as music. You know, once somebody's listened to the, the story, It'll be a while before they come back and want to listen to it again, or they'll play it at someone. So they generally take care, very good care of it. And this record came with a few record scratches. Um, sorry, a few surface scratches. And, uh, you know, I think it's well worth it. And it's certainly lots cheaper than paying 30 to £35 pounds to have the Record Store Day 1 thing um, delivered to you via eBay. And there's something that just bridles a little bit about a reissue. And it's exactly the same recording. Um, and they, they tend, on Record Store Day, the BBC tend to do, or do this, you know, every Record Store Day, there's a Doctor Who album, and it sells out and nobody can get hold of it. So if you know of, or you have any, or you don't, you want to get rid of, or you know someone that does want to get rid of any Argo recordings, I think I'd definitely like to hear from you. But yeah, this was a very good buy. I would recommend it. The audiobook itself, you know, is findable online if you know where to look. If you go to somewhere that normally has audiobooks, you can probably tap in Doctor Who and the Pescatons and it will probably come up somewhere. Um, so if you just wanted to listen to it rather than wanted to buy the record, you could probably do it. I mean, it's 40 years ago. Anybody that was going to buy it rapidly has done so. So, you know, and given the way the internet works. But I actually, let me just counter any argument for you listen to it and then you don't want it. I listened to the audiobook online. Um, it was briefly available as, as an audiobook on YouTube probably illegally, but that made me want to buy it. And then, fair enough, the BBC record company didn't get, you know, um, any sort of money for the second sale. However, you know, the economy did. So this is a record sale, you know, that would be added, you know, wouldn't be added, uh, sort of figured out in the sort of sales of a vinyl. This is an additional sale of vinyl between two private sellers, and I'm really happy that I got it. 
And I think with the next time I go to record fair, I might make a point of looking out audio books and, and, audio, and spoken word recordings, because I think they're very rewarding. Anyway, that's me rambling on. I'll stop. It's a very good record. It was pretty cheap. Um, and uh, we'll just do a little flip side so you can see what the back of the cover looks like. So this is the back of the cover. It's got a picture of Tom Baker and uh, Elizabeth Sladen. Um, it's just got a very brief... Um, Argo's not really known for colour graphics and stuff like that, except on the outside of the cases and the boxes. And I don't know who Matthew Burbridge is. Um, but apparently he really liked this and started to colour it in, which is unfortunate. But to be honest, I don't really mind. I think this means that someone really, really loved this record enough to write their name on it and put their initials on it and start to colour it in. And it was theirs. It was obviously bought for someone, you know, probably about 10 or 12 at the time. And it's sort of like, weirdly, the kind of the same age that I was when I was totally into Doctor Who with Tom Baker in it. So, yeah. So it, it, basically they give you a very brief rundown. There's not a lot on the back. The inner sleeve was extremely plain. Um, and I think it wasn't the original one. So it was just a, like a plastic bag sleeve, which I don't like because it, they're a pain to get back in and they tend to sort of bulge out the sides of the record. So I, have in my record nerdiness, decided to put it into a paper plastic line sleeve, which uh, looked like this. So that's what I do whenever I just replace it with one of these. Um, whenever I, I get a record and the inner sleeve is totally destroyed, if I'm going to swap it out and it's a record I like, I'll you know pay 10 pence and get, and get a plastic lined paper sleeve. It just stops the paper scratching and just putting any more surface scratches on the record. But yeah, that's my very brief re review of uh, the original 1976 recording of uh, Doctor Who and the Pesca Pescatons, done by Decca via the Argo Division. Hope you enjoyed it.